Yeah. Okay, the Dayton City Commission meeting will now come to order. Would you please rise for the invocation given by Commissioner Lovelace and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please bow your heads. Dear Lord, bless and protect us as we serve our fellow members of the community. Bless us with the gift of patience and humility to do good work. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Lavender, may we please have the roll call? <coughs> Mayor Leitzel. Here. Commissioners Lovelace. Here. Williams. Here. Joseph. Here. Whaley. Here. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the October 19th, 2011 meeting? So moved. Second. And properly moved and seconded to approve the minutes for the October 19th meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ms. Lavender, are there any communications or petitions? There are none, Your Honor. Ms. Lavender, do you have any additions, deletions, or comments on the calendar? I do not, Your Honor. Mr. Reardon, do you have any additions, deletions, or comments on the calendar? I don't have any additions or deletions, but I would like to call Aaron Sorrell to the, uh, to the microphone to talk a little bit about item number two that's on the calendar. Uh, the NSP money for the development of some uh, apartments downtown. Mr. Sorrell. Good morning, Mayor, Commissioner, <laughs> City Manager. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the commission and I, or the uh, calendar item in front of you is a uh, NSP2 contract uh, for the uh, lots building. Um, it was formerly known as the Merck, um, which was a project that's been on the drawing board for quite some time. Uh, we're actually really excited about moving forward with this project uh, with NSP2 funds. Um, it is a total project of $14 million, includes the old DPNL steam generation plant as well. Um, both pr buildings are um, abandoned under the NSP2 definition, and uh, this allows us to use those federal funds to really rehab and restore and revitalize that last quadrant of um, East Third Street uh, as you enter into downtown. Um, the total number, it's a, the total number of units at the end of the day will be 32 residential units in the lots building. Uh, and then the adjacent building is called the, Merc, uh, the McIntyre building, which because of the way it's constructed, it, it makes it more financially advantageous for us to um, place the mechanicals or build the mechanicals out in the lots building to service the McIntyre building. So at the end of the day, we expect 72 residential units and then another um, about 30,000 square feet of um, commercial space in the uh, steam plant. Fantastic. That's great. Mr. Stroh, do you expect that th this product uh, will be similar to the product across the road there? Or what, what, what should we compare this to when it's done? I would compare it. Uh, it will be similar to the cannery and then also the uh, Lofts Sinclair, that have Sinclair Lofts, as far as price points. Um, the, the target uh, rental rates are really in line with our current downtown market studies. Um, and as, as you are, as, as most are, uh, know that the uh, <clears throat> downtown market has close to a 93, or excuse me, 95 percent um, occupancy rate, and there is quite a demand for uh, downtown living, especially both now in the for sale and also in the rental market. Great. Now, I don't know if you mentioned this, but I mean, you mentioned the cannery, and to my knowledge, the cannery is completely full and, in fact, um, has a waiting list. That is my uh, understanding as well, and also um, the landing as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand Charlie Sims has sold 10 units. Yes. And he mm -hmm. hasn't even got the first eight finished. So, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the other part of this funding? Of this, this? The other part of the funding uh, is really a mixture of various types of tax credits, um, both historic tax credits and then uh, new market tax credits. Uh, we're utilizing both the state and federal historic tax pr uh, credit program, which was designed to preserve and, and offset the cost of rehabbing historic buildings. And then the new market tax credits is a similar tax credit, but for, um, for commercial um, buildings and commercial endeavors in um, distressed areas. And then the, uh, the final source of funding is really uh, just a loan on the project, conventional uh, financing. Great. Mr. Here. Sorrell, could, could you speak to any, um, the subject of goals in terms of SBE or um, the things, the Section 3 goals or anything like that? Yeah, the, um, the, 
the goals that have been um, outlined by HRC uh, actually have been revised slightly since uh, the, in the contract that's in your packet, and we'll be amending that appropriately. But it is a 30% participation rate um, for Section 3. And then, um, excuse me while I get my notes here, a 15% uh, MBE and 7% uh, WBE subcontracting goal. Mm. Thank you. Mr. Sorrell, are there any, before this could go forward, are there any contingencies or other items that have to occur before it's all ready to completely go? Yeah, we're in the process of uh, wrapping up a few loose threads, um, and that includes um, the, the commercial tenant that would be occupying the uh, steam plant, making, uh, making sure that uh, they're fully committed to the, the terms and the rates, uh, and then also uh, making sure that we have the McIntyre building uh, under, uh, under control for that project. But uh, uh, other than that, um, all indications are that this project uh, will move forward. Great. Okay. Great. Well done. That's good news today. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mayor, there are two other items I'd just like to highlight. Item one is item number uh, 1A1, the BSI Security Services. This is a service. It's a three-year contract just short of $500,000. It is a company that uh, actually had a dispute with us before. They won the contract this time, and they used the PEP preference system where uh, somebody can match the low bid. They did that, and so it's a I think it's a nice example of the success of our program, so it's yeah, it happy to see that. Uh, the second item we talked is item number five, and we'd had a work session where we talked about the uh, uh, bringing the investment manager on, and uh, item number five finally is that contract, and this is a, a three-year contract with a two-year option, so this is finally coming forward with something that we've talked with you about for a while. So those are the two, item, two other items. That's all, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, are there any comments on the city manager's recommendations? Item number eight, I believe. I, mean, if I, if I, if I can find it regarding the uh, job ready sites uh, application that's going to the Department of Development. Could, uh, could someone give me a little bit more background regarding that? We have a number of. Uh, yes. Uh, of, um, I'm, I'm assuming we have a number of these, these, these job ready sites. Not only McCall, but also a Little Richmond and right. Airport and stuff like that. Does this also apply to those, those, those places? And, Right. Let me and, ask. Uh, uh, what's that, the, the expectation regarding that? The once we file the application, well, what's next? Good morning, Mayor, City Commissioners. Good morning. The uh, job ready sites applications are an annual application that we apply for in the fall of every year. If you recall, last the last couple of projects have been we've successfully uh, captured money for the Tech Town Building Three site, as well as the uh, UD uh, project in in rehabbing the former NCR headquarters. So at this point in time. We are just in the process of submitting those applications November 1st, and then we'll find out at the start of the next year as to whether or not we're successful in uh, receiving an award. It is a competitive statewide grant that we have to uh, compete with, and then uh, we can move forward with the project should we receive an allocation. Okay. And allocation, assuming that there is an allocation, what would that amount potentially be? Well, you can, it's up to uh, $3 million that you can apply for, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we would look at, it, and our project would um, not qualify, I don't believe, for that full amount, um, because it is a rehab and a reuse of an existing building, but we think that we could get about two-thirds of the cost of um, rehabbing the McCall's roof um, from, the, from the project should we uh, move forward. It's really to help repair the infrastructure of the McCall's building, which is a, an extremely large commercial building uh, of 350,000 square feet uh, with rail directly into the building, so it's a unique regional asset that we have um, uh, that we think is uh, worth uh, going after and trying to uh, preserve. Okay, great. Glad that you're going after this. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. <coughs> yeah, anyone else have any discussion items? <coughs> I had a question regarding B2. You're, um, I guess we're doing a repair on the, the roof at the um, police academy. Um, is this a, re a repair or a replacement? Do you know? Um, I'm not quite familiar with that, Your Honor. I'd ask uh, Valerie Stuland if she'd come up and, and give a quick summary.
Good morning, Your Honor and Commissioners. Um, in regards to B2, I'm going to try the right purchase one here. Um, mostly this is going to do mostly repair of uh, ventilation systems, uh, flashings, and other works. It won't be a complete replacement. There may be parts that need to be replaced, but it's not a complete replacement of that roof. Okay, I mean, is it, some of this is then a, is, is equipment. I mean, 128000 is a lot of money for a roof. Yeah. But if you look at the Google Maps, you can see the roof. And it looks like one section wasn't pretty bad. Yeah, and also has to do with, I think, moving some of the equipment. It's got okay. roof HVACs and so, things so like that. So it's on that large section of the roof. I, I guess there's so. like three sections. <laughs> there's a large, I'm middle, not, and a... Yeah, I don't yeah. know the details of the roof itself. Okay. So. All right, no, that's fine. Okay. I, I, if it involves some equipment and stuff, I can see. Yeah. We did do some price checking, checked with state terms, schedules, things like that, and this was actually the, less, the best bid that we could get okay. at the time for an emergency service. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, may I have a motion to approve the city manager's recommendation? Your Honor, I move that we approve the city manager's recommendations as presented. Second. Okay. Probably moved and seconded to approve the city manager's recommendations. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Legislation. First reading, emergency resolution number 5864-11, authorizing the city manager to file an application to the State of Ohio Department of Development and to participate in the Ohio Job Ready Sites Program in connection with the McCall Building located at 2333 McCall Street in declaring an emergency. Your Honor, resolution number 5864-11, been, been declared a emergency. I move for its passage. Second the motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and seconded to adopt emergency resolution number 5864-11. All in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Second reading emergency resolution number 5864-11, authorizing the city manager to file an application to the State of Ohio Department of Development and to participate in the Ohio Job Ready Sites Program in connection with the McCall Building located at 2333 McCall Street. Mayor Leitzel? Aye. Commissioners Lovelace? Aye. Williams? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Whaley? Aye. Second reading emergency ordinance number 31106-11, authorizing the sale of certain real estate to Dayton Reliable Tool and retaining an easement upon said property in connection with the proposed Southeast Bikeway and declaring an emergency. Ordinance number 31106-11 being declared an emergency. I move for its immediate passage. Second the motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve emergency ordinance number 31106-11. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mayor Leitzel? Aye. Commissioners Lovelace? Aye. Williams? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Whaley? Aye. Second reading ordinance number 31107-11, vacating Walter Street from Baltimore Street to Alaska <coughs> Street, Alton Avenue from Leonard Street to Leo Street, the alley east of Baltimore Street from Leonard Street to the alley north of Walter Street, the alley east of Alton Avenue from Leonard Street to the alley north of Walter Street, and the alley north of Walter Street from Baltimore Street to Alaska Street. Mayor Leitzel? Aye. Commissioners Lovelace? Aye. Williams? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Whaley? Aye. And that concludes the legislation, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Lavender. Are there any citizens registered to speak? There are. We have a total of two citizens that are registered to speak, and at this time I would like to state there is a three-minute speaking policy. As you address the commission, we ask that you state your name and address for the record, and at that time I will turn on the green light. When the green light comes on, you will have the three minutes to speak. After you have spoken two and a half minutes, a yellow light will come on, then you will have 30 seconds remaining to speak. When the red light comes on, you'll be asked to cease your comment to take your seat. At this time, I call forward Miracle Trotman. Good morning, Mayor and City Commission. My name is Miracle Trotman. My address is 1418 Princeton Drive. Dayton, Ohio, 45406. Um, my reason for coming here today, um, I am putting on a seminar entitled Sons of Solomon for teen males ages 11 to 18. And what the whole focus is, is teaching males on how to treat ladies, how to be gentlemen. Um, a lot of males that I encounter, they don't even know how to t tie a tie. So what we're gonna do that day is just teach them different things on the violence, dealing with anger, um, different things in the community. It's gonna be held on November the 12th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's gonna be at the Greater Dayton Recreation Center and um, I also just got finished doing a seminar entitled My Beauty is Priceless and I started that in 
in July, and it's for teen girls, and that's ages 11 to 18, and I taught them the inner beauty is more important than the outer beauty. With so much stuff going on in the world, with everybody on TV, with the reality shows, they don't have really role models anymore, and so what I'm trying to do is bring up young women and young men together so they can <coughs> just work together for this community. So that's what I want to do. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. So are, are you doing this by yourself or are you part of a group? Um, I'm doing this by myself. It's something that I wanted to do. As far as the young men, my sons attend the all-boys school. So when I would go there every day, a lot of the young men would address me like, hi, baby, just different comments. But I didn't blame them. They just didn't know how to address me because a lot of the older men addressed me the same way. So this is just something that I wanted just to start and do just for these young men so they can be able to address females the way that they're supposed to be and for young ladies to act like ladies. Class has gone away. So this is something I'm doing on my own, but I do have a lot of people who's joining on board with me to help me with this. Okay, so you have to be 18, you can be over 18 to come to the class, right? Yes, I actually had a lady who came to my class who was 26 when I did my teen female seminar because mm. she didn't know how to cook, she didn't know how to do anything, and she just wanted to learn different things about being a lady. And she learned a lot and actually brought another lady to another seminar that okay. I did for teens. And so I was able to help them as far as not going out in public with a headscarf on, pajamas, just different things just to show <laughs> them how to be ladies. Well, good for you. Thank you. you should be proud to be doing this. Thank you. Is there a cost through this? Or? No, for the male seminar, it's going to be free. Um, so I'm just taking sponsors because I believe a lot of people will not invest in males as far as the parents. Um, so I just want it to be open. I'm going to have an open gym for them um, because if you do things as far as activities, they'll come in the morning and stay through the seminars. And then if you have open gym, they'll come and just want to have fun in the afternoon. So I'm going to make this free for the males with um, food, manuals, and everything. Great, Mr. Robin. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Right. Thank you. Thank Ray you. Hollingsworth. <coughs> good, okay, Ray Holland Smart is my name. Uh, good morning, Mayor, Commissioners. I live at uh, 4438 Hoover Avenue. Okay, issues, railroad tracks, intersections are terrible still. Um, and we have construction sites on Hoover Avenue. Uh, first off, uh, the railroad tracks crossing uh, is in need of repair. I had mentioned before, on Gettysburg and 3rd Street, the railroad tracks on those two different streets mainly. I drive those streets uh, pretty often. Um, what we're asking, I know that winter time is coming, that we can at least repair the sections that we drive on uh, going across the tracks to soften the, the blow. A lot of people don't have new cars, and some of these older cars are shaking to death going across these railroad tracks. Um, let me see, the intersections all over are still full of uh, uh, much dips and, and uneven surfaces when you're making turns you can just feel your car shaking and I'm wondering where are the, the city streets inspectors who who we expect to drive the same streets and feel the same thing that we're feeling um, and I'm wondering also if they even live in the area or do they live on the outer skirts of, of the Dayton immediate areas that we drive every day and um, also Another issue is uh, it's not an issue, but it's a concern. How long is the construction on Hoover Avenue going to uh, take place? It's been almost it's been about three weeks that uh, the Hoover right in front of the old bowling alley has been under construction. That's where the two people died hitting equipment. And I, I guess I missed it, but I didn't know how long this construction was going to go on. And then last but not least, the issue two is confusing to many people. It's very serious. Uh, the commercials are, sound alike and uh, voting yes or no. We feel that the gambit of this yes and no sound alike is, a com is, uh, uh, is to cause innocent people to accidentally vote for the wrong yes or no. We want uh, the reps of the yes and no issue two to sit together in an interview and expound on, explain on their, uh, their viewpoint of issue two, so we the people can make qual a quality a decision with no deception from one seeking us to vote for, on this issue. We need them to sit down together because it sounds so alike, it sounds all like they have older ladies sent issue one, vote yes, vote no, and we're, it just sounds too much alike. So we, we need to set a date, set them down side by side. And that is going to be all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Arlington, I want to let you know this evening, uh, Updaten is having a voters forum. 
where both sides from issue two will be there. The voters forum, I think, is, is somewhere here in downtown. The Harmon Davis. Business Center, North yes. Main. So you can get that information there this evening. Both sides five, will be there. It's five thirty North Main at six o'clock tonight, and and there'll be the the issue two portion is going to be at six o'clock. So. And further, there'll be um, both issue two sides will be on WHIO Thursday and Sunday on radio. So. And and, and I just want to add this: uh, it's great that you come forward. If you can give us locations, exact locations of these these roads, it would help. Um, I find it amusing. Uh, as mayor, people think that I, you know, we, we have a city that's 55 square miles, 65 neighborhoods, and sometimes people think the commissioners are all uh, up in the sky looking down, you know, with, with eyes and we know everything, but until it's on the radar screen, we can't <laughs> fix the problem. So I, I invite you definitely to, to give us the exact addresses so that we can get it in the hands of the right people and they can take a look and, and make an evaluation. So I thank you for doing that. Mayor, hey, Mr. Thanks. Manager, I just if I can <coughs> jump in real quick because I'm I, just going to suggest that he talks to Mr. Uh, Stovall here right after the meeting and can do exactly that. Great, but um, I, I want to make it clear to the community, if we can, about our process. You know, I I had the good fortune of driving a portion of those 55 miles um, pat, this past Sunday after church on uh, James H. McGee um, near near the Hoover and Walton area, and that, that, was, that street is. That street does have some challenges, and I know I think um, Mr. Hollingsworth has brought that one up before. What is the process that we use? Could you share that with the public in terms of how we evaluate and prioritize um, which streets uh, will be uh, repaired? Um, I'll give you a, a, a general. We look first of all on all the streets. We'll look at the intersections, and we try to focus or the intersect the, uh, the the main roads. Excuse me and uh, the main roads that are traveled. For instance, in this case, uh, uh, James McGee Boulevard, we've been uh, updating it in, uh, I think, two or three weeks ago, the commission passed another um, uh, ordinance that will let us uh, finish uh, updating James McGee Boulevard. So we look at the, uh, the main roads and, and try to decide which ones are the worst and fix them up. We've used an awful lot of grant money to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, frankly, it's been one of the areas where we haven't had significant or haven't had enough money to do all the repairs that we would like. But we do go out, the street maintenance people who do drive the roads uh, all the time, look and try to find where are the worst roads, where are the worst problems, and bring those forward. And then we go down the list depending on how much money we have. Other than other than having citizens come down to the city commission meeting, like Mr. Hollingsworth has done the from time to time, is there another <coughs> is there another process that they can do to make sure they can let you aware? Well, it's, it's right. It's call the uh, public works department and let them know. Uh, the street maintenance supervisors are always out on the streets, as are a lot of the city engineers, and they go and they inspect and and they do that. I think it's been disappointing to me that we just haven't had sufficient funds to make all the repairs as fast as possible. Though the James McGee Boulevard is another example where we've used the grant process to uh, to do that to, to to get the money to fix things faster, but again, a call to the Public Works Department three 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 forty eight hundred will uh, you know they can let people know that's oh and also go to the City of Dayton website and and uh, make a comment there and and we'll get the information and have somebody take a look at it. Great. Uh, Mr. Reardon, do you have any closing comments? I just have uh, one, uh, Mayor. Last week, Bing Davis was here and talked about his, um, you know, some of the artworks that he was doing, and it got me interested. So I went out to look at the uh, presentation that's currently in his gallery on uh, West Third Street. It's a very powerful gallery or powerful show. It's done by a local artist, and it sort of juxtaposes the idea of the KKK, which was kin killing kin. Uh, and it's just a very powerful show, and if people haven't seen it, I highly recommend uh, people to go out and look at that show. Done by a Dayton artist over 10 years, and uh, uh, doesn't take long to see it, but some interesting descriptive work and, and very powerful, so I'd recommend everybody see that. All right. That's <coughs> all, Your Honor. Ms. Lavender, do you have any closing comments? Uh, the finance briefing work session will be <coughs> held at the conclusion of the meeting in the city manager's large conference room. Okay. That's all, Your Honor. Commissioners, do you have any closing comments? Just want to remind everyone that leaf pickup begins Monday, right, Mr. Stowall, and goes through the end of the year. So I know people will be busy bagging their leaves and 
I did receive the um, calendar in the mail first class, so thank you for doing that. I appreciate the update, but I want to remind people of that. And then again, my weekly reminder that you can vote. Uh, election day is 13 days away, and you can go to the Board of Elections right now and vote early. Their number is 225-5656, uh, and they're open from 8 to 4. They're at 451 West 3rd Street in the County Administration Building in the lower le mezzanine, mezzanine level. Mm -hmm. So it's important to vote this year. Uh, I want to remind everyone of that. Just want to welcome uh, members of the uh, National Association of the Blacks and Criminal Justice today, and they had their conference this past um, weekend up up at the uh, Wright State. Uh, that was well done and well attended. So I want to at least welcome. Most of them come from uh, Northeast Ohio, but it was a good conference and had some good speakers. And I had a chance to join uh, Jeff Mims and uh, Mayor Cameron out of Trywood in a workshop on 194, the voter suppression bill. So um, it was a good, good piece. And I want to at least uh, welcome those folks that are still here in Dayton to come on downtown and spend some money. Do you have anything, Commissioner Joseph? No, sir. I, I did also want to, Commissioner Williams brought this up. I did want to also um, bring up to Mr. Hollingsworth on the voting issue on issue one, two, and three. There are three issues on the ballot. Uh, the first issue has to do with um, judge's age and how old a, a judge can be in order to run again. I think the cutoff is 70 right now, and so that's increasing that cutoff right now. Um, and a yes vote is to allow the age to be ra raised. A no vote is to say the law is fine as it is. The second uh, issue, issue number two, is regarding um, a referendum on the Senate Bill 5 that was up. A yes vote is to support Senate Bill 5, which are the changes made to the collective bargaining rights that the House and Senate um, passed in February, I think mm -hmm. maybe March. Uh, this body uh, uh, passed a resolution asking the Senate not to pass that bill. And they did. Um, so a yes vote is to support that. A no vote is to stop that bill from going into place and to protect the collective bargaining rights of public employees. Issue three is a health care issue. Quite frankly, um, in all estimation, it doesn't really change anything. Um, issue three, to vote yes. Um, I, I don't really. It, it doesn't matter how you vote on it. It's, uh, it's, it's the, 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 the third amendment is putting state law over the U.S. Constitution which over federal law, which is just so it doesn't matter how you vote on it. It, it doesn't matter. The third amendment. I mean, I, I mean, really, yeah, it doesn't. It, it just I mean, doesn't I'm, matter. It, it's, it's more. It, they say it's a law, but it's more. Of, it's like a referendum, I guess. It doesn't have any teeth. It's there a, are there are some pieces think. that 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 um, because it was put in, I think, more for political reasons than changing any yeah. law. There are pieces of it that. Um, could have some side effects, and so yeah. that there is some concern about that. So you did I just a good job explaining what one, two, and three are. That, that's good. Thank you. You know, there's <laughs> well, a lot. But, 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 but an easy response, though, like yeah. no. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Well, yes, yeah, it could be lovely. Oh, okay. I do plan on voting no on all three. So. <laughs> I think you have a better job than just say no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think in, in less time. Be voting no three. So I just wanted to give that since Mr. Hollingsworth is confused. I know there's a lot of confusion, especially about issue two, especially since. Uh, uh, certain grandmothers on both sides of the the <laughs> camera, it seems. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you had that up update. So thank you. And I do want to make it clear on, on three. It, it doesn't matter if you vote yes or no, but if you're annoyed at people doing political posturing and putting people to great expense and trouble to put something like this, this, this third one on the ballot, then vote no against it just on principle because it's just it's a waste of people's time. It's silly. It is silly. And I just want to remind everyone Good. that this weekend uh, there will be lots of little ghosts and goblins out mm -hmm. collecting candy. Monday. Uh, Monday in Dayton is beggars night. Just drive carefully and uh, watch out for them. And put out big candy. Big candy. Right. <laughs> oh, Mayor, <laughs> somebody should come to your house then, huh? No, no, no. Why don't you allow, I, I, you know, the city, we usually do something for, um, what we call it beggars night. What is it called now? Halloween. Halloween uh, uh, Harvest Fest. The Harvest Fest. Trick or treat. Okay. Anyway, we, we do something for the young people in the evening at the end of October <laughs> annually, whatever we call it. And I just want to know, if should we, Mr. Manager, you want to come up or have somebody come up and just share what we're going to do from the city's perspective? Uh, oh, yes, uh, Lachey uh, <laughs> Smith to come up. I don't even know what it's called. 
What is it called? <laughs> harvest. <laughs> harvest Fest? Fall Harvest. Fall. Fall. See, I knew it had Harvest Fest. <laughs> Good morning and thank you. I'm Lachey Smith, Director for Recreation and Youth Services, Mayor, Commissioner, City Manager, and Clerk. We will have our annual Fall Harvest event on Monday night, uh, October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. It will be at three of our rec centers, Lower Rye Recreation Center, Northwest Recreation Center and the Greater Dayton Recreation Center. And again, this is an alternative to um, neighborhood trick-or-treating. People can come into the centers. Um, children can ha do crafts, games. Um, the centers are decorated fantabulously th this uh, week. If you haven't been in, you should go in. They're a little scary on some uh, ends, but on others, it's pretty fun stuff. And so kids can come out. They'll get candy, uh, have crafts. Uh, there's pumpkin carving. Uh, there's free swimming. So we invite the community to come out. And, and bring your children out. Um, there's games for all ages, and so candy is available for kids between the ages of uh, three and all the way up to 17. So it's not just limited to the little ones if uh, big kids like candy too. So we have that available as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. I guess uh, may I have a motion to convene into an executive session? Is that me? Yeah. Your Honor, I move the City Commission convene into a work session followed by an executive session to discuss personnel and collective bargaining issues. Second. Ms. Lavender, may we please have the roll call? Mayor Lighto? Here. Commissioner Lovelace? Here. Williams? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Whaley? Aye. Okay. Thank you all.